Sergeant Preston of the Yukon. On ten, on you, Huskies. <laughs> gold, gold discovered in the Yukon. Back to the days of the gold rush. And the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon in their relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. In a cabin on an abandoned claim on Wolf Creek, Tony Logan, a hard, tough crook, sat reading the White Horse Daily News while his three companions passed the time in a game of cards. The others listened as Tony read a short editorial from the newspaper. Hey, Chuck, listen to this, fellas. What's it say this time, Tony? Read it out loud. All right, listen. Tony Logan and his crooked companions have terrorized this community far too long. They committed several more crimes in the past three weeks. Some of them in broad daylight. How much longer are the police going to allow this ruthless killer and his gang to flout the law and, and play upon the hard-working members of this community? <laughs> 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 ah, you see, we're getting famous. Yeah, the editor must sit away <laughs> tonight trying to think of what else to say about it. Yeah. Hey, here's an interesting item. The Nugget Cafe has done a landslide business the last few days since the boat from Dawson arrived. Is that another tip off of us, Tony? Yeah, I reckon it is. <laughs> that editor would have a fit if he knew how much his news items helped us in our business, huh, boys? <laughs> All right. We'll hit the cafe tonight about midnight. After they've taken in plenty more cats and gold. Now, we'll separate as usual. Cover our tracks and meet back here with the loot. <laughs> We'll give that editor some more to put in this paper tomorrow. That night, at midnight, the Nugget Cafe was crowded. Suddenly, the door opened and a warning shot rang out. Hey, hey, hey. Mr. Holder! Any more bullets we fire won't be waiting. Hey, it's Tony Logan and his man. Oh, watch out, they're killers. Now, reach, Tony. Line up over there against the wall. Don't let them get away with this. You ask for this, mister. Now, that shows we mean business. All right, fellas, get the cash and gold. And make it fast. Even stronger editorials appeared in the White Horse newspaper. And the telegraph wires carried the news to Northwest Mounted Police Headquarters in Dawson. It was a couple of days later when Sergeant Preston entered the office of the inspector at police headquarters. Stand for me, Inspector? Yes, Sergeant. Sit down. Thank you, sir. I'll get right to the point. A small gang headed by a man named Stoney Logan has been terrorizing the prospectors in and around Whitehorse. Oh, I've heard of Stoney Logan. Well, Logan and his men have openly and brazenly robbed and killed time after time in the past few weeks. The editor of the newspaper down there is raking us over the coals for not doing something about it. I see, sir. Sergeant, Stoney Logan and his killers must be stopped. I'm sending you and a couple of other men down there to see that they are. Why, uh... I'd rather take King, Inspector, and try it alone, if you don't mind, sir. If we need help, we'll get the constable in Whitehorse to work with us. All right, Sergeant, if that's the way you want it. But one way or another, I want Tony Logan and his men. We'll do our best, sir. I warn you, Sergeant, they're killers. They'll not hesitate to shoot a member of the force any more than they would anyone else. I'll remember that, sir. King and I will leave for Whitehorse at once. Well, goodbye and good luck, Sergeant. Something tells me you're going to need it. But remember, I expect you to get Tony Logan. Sergeant Preston left Dawson within the hour. And traveling along the ice-covered Yukon River, he and the king made record time in their run south to Whitehorse. When he arrived at Whitehorse, the sergeant reported his arrival to the constable. And then, taking King with him, he went to the office of the town's small but growing newspaper, the Whitehorse Daily News, and talked to the editor. Sergeant, I can't understand why the Northwest Mounted Police have sent only one man down here to try to capture that bunch of killers. In some cases, one man can accomplish more than several. <laughs> well, I must admit I've heard a lot about you and this dog of yours, Sergeant. But I'm afraid you've taken on more than you can handle if you think you and King will get Stoney Logan and his men. Maybe so. We'll do our best. Well, here are the news clippings we asked for. These will give you all the information about the crimes committed by those cutthroats. Oh, thanks. I'll look them over and try to get an idea of how this gang works. If there's any more I might do to help, just call me, sir. 
It'll be a big day around here, and I'll take back all I wrote about the Mounties. If Stoney Logan and his men are finally caught. Thanks. Maybe there'll be something more I'll ask of you later. Come along, Jack. <laughs> Later, in the constable's office, Sergeant Preston and the constable checked over the new clippings carefully. Sergeant Preston also read over some old copies of the paper the constable had kept. Finally, Sergeant Preston remarked, Constable, I have thoroughly checked these clippings on Stoney Logan. I also read other items in the papers you have here. I have noticed something that may help break this case. What is it, Sergeant? Well, for instance, look here. This news item says the Nugget Cafe has done a landslide business the last few days since the boat from Dawson arrived. The issue is dated November the 10th. Say, it was around midnight on that date that Logan and his men held up the cafe. That's right. Here's an item in another issue. This one tells about a prospect of making a strike at Claim 40 on Elk Run. A fellow named Lewis. According to Dateline on one of the clippings, Lewis was robbed by Logan a day after that item appeared. All these crimes follow the same pattern. Just what does that mean to you, Sergeant? Well, I'd say Stoney Logan watches the newspapers for items like that, and then he and his men move in. Hey, that could be it. I wondered how they always seemed to hit where they were sure to get cash or gold. Of course it's possible Stoney may have a spy around town to sit him off on prospect. Yes, that is possible. Believe me, Sergeant, I've tried every way to track them down, but I've had no success. That's why I sent the headquarters to help. They're smart enough to separate after the crime. And to travel well beaten trail so they can't be followed. That's where King will come in handy. Right, boy? <laughs> what do you mean? Once King gets the scent of Logan or one of his companions, the rest will be fairly easy. You see, King can follow their trail by scent. Maybe so. But unless you knew ahead of time where they strike, and had King there to pick up their scent, it doesn't seem possible. Uh, wait a minute. That gives me an idea, Constable. Perhaps we could fix this so that Stoney Logan and his men will strike at a certain place we do know about in advance. How could you fix anything like that? Through the newspaper. The editor offered to cooperate in any way I asked. I'll go over to his office right now and see if I can arrange things. See you later, Constable. I'll tell you all about it. Come on, King. <laughs> the next afternoon, Stoney Logan and two of his men looked up as the other member of the gang entered the hideout cabin. All right, Joe. Got any news in town? Yeah. I got news, Tony, but it isn't too good. What do you mean it isn't good? <laughs> Ever hear of Sergeant Preston in the Mounties and his big dog? Sure, who hasn't? Last time I heard, Preston was in Dawson. Well, he isn't in Dawson now. He's riding the white horse, and he's got his dog with him. Hey, he must have come here to hunt for us. That's what I think. Well, it isn't good, Tony. I've heard a lot about that Mounty and his dog. Yeah, so have I. Well, maybe it's about time we get away from here and head for the border, Tony. Ah, don't be local, Lou. You and Buck have been listening to the tall yarns they tell about that mountain and his dog. The old sourdoughs up here in the Yukon tell those crazy stories to pass away the time. Well, Stoney, we're really smart. We'll lay low while that mountain and his dog are in White Horse. We better not pull any more holdups while they're around. I'll dry up, you two. The trouble with both of you is that you want your share of everything, but you don't want to take any risks. I'm not going to let Preston or any other mountain scare me off or run me out of here. Too much cash and gold around just for the taking. Bring the new issue of the newspaper, Joe. Yeah, yeah, here it is. Yeah, look at that headline. Dewey takes Manila. Well, <laughs> we let him take Manila while we stay here and take White Horse, huh? <laughs> you get the glory, we get the gold. At least he doesn't have every money in the Yukon breathing down his neck. Uh, stop going yell on it. But what's got into you anyway? Uh, hey, here's something. What? Listen to this. The Chaco makes rich strike on terrible crick. Luck of a newcomer, huh? Yeah, listen. Robert Merrill, who staked a claim on Caribou Crick only a month ago, reports making a strike yesterday and expects to bring in plenty of raw gold by the end of the week. Merrill has claim number 22. Well, that's what I call real luck. Yeah, but it's going to be our luck. You mean you're thinking of going after some of that tenderfoot gold with that Mounty press and still in town? Sure, yeah, why not? Claim 22 on Caribou Crick is about 10 miles from Whitehorse. We won't even have to go through town. We just take a cross trail from here. Well, I think it's risky. But if you say... I do say so. We go after Merrill's gold on Saturday. That's the day he'll start the town with his weekly tape. And we'll get it. In spite of Sergeant Preston and that big dog in here. <laughs> The following day, 
Rocky, Sergeant Preston, with King leading a dog team, moved along the well-beaten trail up Caribou Creek, accompanied by the constable. Well, we'll soon be at claim 22, Sergeant. What sort of fellow is Bob Merrill, Constable? Well, he's a fine old star, though I knew in Selkirk before I took this district. He really did take that claim on Caribou Creek a month ago. His claim north of here gave out. I see. He's liable to be insulted if he reads that item saying he's a Chitaco. He'd be more surprised to learn he'd made a strike. We'll explain when we see him that the items have come on for Logan. You sure he'll cooperate with us? Oh, of course. No one around here knows Merrill. He did have one friend who came here with him and staked the claim elsewhere. But that friend was killed by Logan in the cafe raid. I see. Oh, Bob Merrill came to me and said he'd do absolutely anything to help catch those killers. Now I understand why you suggested using his name. I know he'll do anything he can to help us in our plan, Sergeant. Now, that's the Merrill cabin just ahead. Good. I hope our plan works out, but if it doesn't, we'll try something else. Closing! Oh, oh, oh. Let's go inside. Come along, fella. <laughs> Well, hi there, Constable. Oh, I see you brought another Monty along with you. Come on in out of the cold. Thanks. thanks. Bob, this is Sergeant Preston. Glad to meet you, Bob. Same here, Sergeant. Yeah. Oh, mighty fine dog you have there. How are you, fella? That's King, my best friend. Nothing to find him a good dog. Then uh, what brings you out this way, Constable? Well, I'll ask Sergeant Preston to explain, Bob. We want you to help us catch Tony Logan and his men. Tony Logan, did you say? Why, that dirty low town poor cat. He and those yellow crooks of his shot down my best friend only a short time ago at the cafe. What do you want me to do? Oh, Bob, we took the liberty of putting an item in the White Horse Daily News stating that a Chichaco, Robert Merrill, had made a gold strike here at Claim 22. What? Gold in this donkey claim? I don't get it. And what's more, I'm no Chichaco, Sergeant. I've been working claims in Yukon now on the 40 yards. We know, Bob, we know. But it's more usual for the newspaper to make a front page spread about a Chichaco making the gold strike. Sergeant Preston wanted to make sure Logan and his men saw that item. Oh, sure. That's all right with me, eh? The way we've planned this, Bob, is for the constable to go back to Whitehorse. King and I stay here with you. Well, I'm glad to have you. But uh, what do you expect to happen? Tony Logan might read that item. And if he does... Come here with his men to rob you of this gold. If they do come, that will be the end of Stony Logan's gang. I'll go back to town now, so I'll not be missed, Sergeant. But I'll come back here after dark without fail. Good. I'll be looking for you. See you then. Right. Go on for a while. Bye. 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 Leaving Sergeant Preston and King at Bob Merrill's cabin to wait for Stony Logan and his men, the constable left for Whitehorse after promising to return that night. It was late afternoon when he entered the cafe in town to pick up what news he could. <laughs> As the constable walked to the bar, Buck and Lou, Logan's men, were talking to a sourdough. Are you sure about that, mister? Yep, I'm sure, all right. The white horse paper doesn't usually print things that aren't true. Well, can't help that. Bob Barrow's no more of a Chichaco than I am. We worked the claim together and I on to a year and a half ago near Shelter. Then a month ago, Bob staked a claim on Caribou Creek. I just got here to White Horse yesterday and got a surprise when I read that writing about Bob in the paper. Then you don't believe he really made a strike, is that it? Nope, I don't. No sourdough like Bob Merrill is going to tell any newspaper he made a strike before he got his cake into town and staked out more land. He'd know that if word got out like that, they'd maybe be a stampede that'd snow him under. Uh, all, all the land around Claim 22 has already been staked, uh, so there won't be any stampede up there. Oh, hello, Constable. I guess you ought to know about that. Seems like I saw you heading up the Caribou Creek Trail this morning with another Monty. Uh, we, uh, we had business up that way. Yeah. So was a fine dog you had along with you. About the finest and biggest I've seen in the Yukon. The only man I know has a dog like that is Sergeant Preston. So it uh, must have been him with you. Uh, maybe it was. Uh, we got to be going. See you later, mister. Come on, Lou. Yeah, yeah. What do you make of it? Something fishy about the whole thing. That sourdough said he saw Preston and the dog going up the Caribou Creek Trail this morning with a constable. I saw the constable come into town a little while ago. Alone. Well, that 
figure Preston is still up there. Maybe at Merrill's place. That stuff in the paper might have been a plan to get Stoney and us up there. Hey, that's right. Well, what are we stopping for? Constable seemed a little upset when he heard that sourdough talking. Yeah. We'll keep out of sight and watch one to come out of the cafe. We'll follow him, see what he does. There'll be time enough later to tell Stoney what we heard. The constable left the cafe and went to his cabin. And then with his dog sled, he started out along the Caribou Creek Trail. He didn't know that two of Stoney's men, Buck and Lou, followed along behind him. Hush! Hush, you hussy! The constable was making good time along the hard-packed trail. As he and his dog team approached a point where a cross trail from Wolf Creek joined the Caribou Creek Trail, he halted the team for a short rest. Ho, ho, ho! At that moment, a shot rang out, and the constable fell to the ground, wounded. Yeah, boy. Come on. Yeah. 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 the shoulder. Yeah. That's a good shot. If I do say so myself. Why did you shoot him, Buck? Can't figure it out. I got to think. If he told Preston the sourdough at the cafe was telling everyone the story about Claim 22 is a pony, a person might come back to town. What if he did? If Preston doesn't hear about it, he'll stay where he is. It'll give Stoney and us a chance to pull a job in White Horse. Especially with both him and the constable out of the way. Come on, put the constable on his sled and take him to our cabin. Hey, help me lift him up. Sure. All right, let's get going. Mark you, Hustler! Meanwhile, as the night wore on and the constable didn't return to the Merrill cabin... Sergeant Preston became worried. Constable should have been here long ago, Bob. Good night. Well, I reckon he'd be along soon. He said he'd be back early. I think I'll take King and go part way down the trail to meet him. I'll leave the scene here. Which is he say, Sergeant? I'll feel better anyway, getting some fresh air. How about it, King? <laughs> All right, boy. We'll leave right now and go meet the constable. <laughs> to continue. With King running along ahead of him, Sergeant Preston set out along the Caribou Creek Trail. King ran just beyond where the cross trail joined, the one they were following. Then he stopped, sniffing the ground and barking in sight of What is it, King? <laughs> Sergeant Preston knew that King was trying to tell him he had found a familiar scent. For a moment he was puzzled. Then it came to him. Oh, it must be the constable sent you a picture, boy. I don't understand why... When... What's this? <laughs> at that moment, Sergeant Preston noticed a dark stain in the snow. He stood looking down at it a moment, and then realizing what it meant, he turned to King. King, find the constable. Find boy. <laughs> it was after midnight when Buck and Lou arrived at the cabin where Stoney Logan and the other member of the gang, Joe, were waiting. Buck told Stoney Logan all that they had heard at the cafe concerning Bob Merrill. When he mentioned that the constable and Sergeant Preston had gone to Merrill's place together, and that the constable was on the way back there when they shot him, Stoney interrupted. What I want to know is why you shot him and brought him here. Don't you get it, Stoney? Now, look, that story was a plan in the paper to get us to claim 22 so they could grab it. I figure with the constable here and Preston and the dog still waiting over there, well, it leaves the way wide open for us to strike somewhere else. Yeah. Yeah, I see what you mean now, Buck. There was darn good figure in the back. What are we going to do about that mounty on the car? Let him. First, Lou. You go out and unhitch his dogs and scatter them. We'll hide the sled in the snowdrift. Sure, right away. Now, Buck, you and Joe tie that mounty's hands and feet. We'll take them out back and toss them under a snowbank. You won't be found to break. Sure. Listen, Logan, shoot me and get it over with. Oh, no. I like this way better. Now get busy, you two, and tie him up. Right. Come on, Joe. Let's get some raw hide. We'll get inside right now. We're all hanged for this. Ah, shut up. <laughs> Listen to Lou outside. He's having trouble getting those dogs on here. Yeah, I hear him. Man, yeah, I'll hold your feet. I got his hands tied. Now, you two take him out back, like I said. No, no, no. Wait a minute. I'll go along and be sure he's well covered by the snow. <laughs> Put your parkers on, too, fellas. We'll be going into town soon. This business is finished. All right. I don't want to keep him a little outside. You ought to have those drawers settled in there, huh? Yeah, that's right. I guess we'll find out. Don't move, buddy. Hey, what? 
I got one of your men outside. You three are next. Come on. A press tonight. Hold it. No, my arm. Get him, Joe. Don't try it. The other cook, Joe, in a lightning-like move, sprang beside the bunk on which the constable lay. Holding a gun to the constable's head, he spoke. Drop your gun, Preston, and I'll fuck the constable. Oh, it, Joe. For a moment, Preston hesitated. He knew the cook would kill the constable if he didn't drop his gun. He glanced around quickly at the two wounded men, Stoney and Buck, who had both dropped their guns. Preston also caught a glimpse of something else in that quick look. The intelligent dog King had crept through the shadows along the wall and was to one side of Joe, ready to spring. Preston spoke sharply. Get him, King. Oh, no! Oh, take him off of me. Moving quickly, picked up the guns which Stoney and the others had dropped. Then he spoke again. Come, oh, King. Come, oh, boy. All right. The three of you stand over there and face that wall. Watch them, King. Constable, are you all right? I have a shoulder wound, Sergeant. They tied me hand and foot, and we're going to bury me in the snow. Now, keep an eye on them while I cut you loose. There. How about that crook outside, Sergeant? I got here just as he came outside to unhitch your dog team. King jumped in, and I tied him up out there. I should have known you and that dog had outsmarted. We came down here to find you, Logan. I arrest you and your men in the name of the Crown. We'll attend to your wounds and then take you to jail. It'll be a relief to get them to town and behind bars, Sergeant. Yes, None will please me to say this case is closed. And now, here is Sergeant Preston. Sergeant Preston reporting for duty, Inspector. Sergeant, a ten-year-old boy named Joey Clayton has inherited the Half Moon Gold Mine. One of the richest mines in this area. Has a guardian been appointed to the boy? A man has come forward who says that he's Joey's lost father, Bert Clayton. I want you to investigate Clayton. Yes, sir. Make sure that he's honest. If Joey's father, he'll have control of the mine. If he's dishonest, he could steal a fortune from the boy. Very well, sir. I'll get busy right away. Come on, sir. Is the man who claims to be Bert Clayton really Joey's father? Or is he masquerading under a false identity to gain control of the half-moon mine? If so, he'll undoubtedly resort to desperate measures to keep Sergeant Preston from exposing him. Perhaps he may even plot the sergeant's death. Be sure to hear this next exciting adventure.